When I think of Amelia Island, I think of these beautiful roads that are just hammocked by these very old oak trees. It's about as pretty as you can get. An island that is so full of vegetation. From an aerial view, you probably wouldn't even be able to realize there's as many homes that there are here because they're, they've just kind of built it into the landscape. It's also known as Florida's first coast, you know, one of the older cities in Florida, and it has a lot of history. So you're thinking kingfish, big, big targeted species right we, now? I uh, think go along the beach and uh, cast net some menhaden. And uh, menhaden catches a pretty good variety of our fish here in Amelia Island. And uh, run a few miles out and go for a kingfish and cobia and sailfish and bonitas. Sometimes you just never know what you're going to catch out there. But the kingfish have been doing really, really well. What size are those kings? They're anywhere from eight pounds to over 40. Oh, wow. You fish here, right? That's your profession. How long have you been fishing here? I've been fishing since I was probably about three years old here in Amelia Island. And, uh, you know, my dad, you know, growing up with him, working with him on his charter boats and stuff. And, you know, this time of the year, we like to be out in the ocean for, for the ocean stuff. Yeah. It's a little break for you, too, out of the inshore. I always look forward to the ability to go it's, offshore. And yeah, this, a little different. Exactly. This time of the year, it gets real hot in, in around the marsh and stuff. So being out in the ocean, it kind of a little cooler. Yeah. So it's a little bit easier on there as well. So where's the bunker? Right outside the inlet? They are right outside the inlet. Uh, they've been pretty pretty close to the beach here the last few days in about five or six feet of water. Right. And, uh, we'll we do should, that first, load up should, the live well? I have to say we do that first. It should take one cast and uh, we'll be good to go. And then run about eight miles from there. Do it, got a pretty morning for us. Awesome, it. beautiful. Amelia Island, the east coast of Florida, you can't go any further north than this. The, uh, the inlet, the pass actually borders Florida and Georgia. And I've been here before, uh, incredible fishing. Beautiful Spartina marshes in the back country, but also has a wonderful offshore fishery as well. And something that I have not done up here yet is check out the offshore scene. It can be really good certain times of the year and we've timed it just right. The school's a baiter out front. There's plenty of kingfish. After we talked to TD, he said, you know, this is our best game plan. We get out in the morning, get some live bait, head offshore, and you really never know what you're gonna catch out there. First pogey in the water, 30 seconds. TD's got a rod in the water. My camera guys aren't even ready, and he's already hooked up. I'm sure, I'm sure there's another one, another one out there. I'm just sitting here staring at you. I was just amazed that oh, we you saw the book. <laughs> TD said it right, it wasn't gonna take long. And, and first bait in the water, 30 seconds into it. We pull up on a spot, you know, hard bottom number, meaning there's, there's some reef below us. We're immediately marking fish on the Ray Marine. Oh, I got bit. Yep. There he is. <laughs> Kingfish rigs are made out of wire typically because of those sharp teeth. And it usually consists of two small treble hooks. That first treble hook you'll sink in the nose of the bait so he swims correctly and the back one's just a trailing hook that more times than not catches that kingfish. What they like to do is like to come up, cut that bait in half and that's why you want that stinger rig there trailing behind that bait. Put those baits down there, they're gonna eat them. Oh yeah, you got some good bait. King? Kingfish. You'll get those cobia, they'll come right up to the back of the, right up to your boat. Follow those kings up. Oh yeah. <laughs> Woo, rock and roll. This is a typical size out here? Uh, these are schooling size. There's some there's some 40 pounders out here. You'll go through a lot of these and then all of a sudden you'll get a big one. Yesterday we caught them up to 20. Just be careful the yeah. hooks and teeth here. <laughs> kind of cookie cutter size. Yeah. Beautiful fish. Good smoking size.
no matter where you go in the Amelia Island area, if you mention fishing, there's one thing that's synonymous with that is the Lacoste family. Um, multiple generations of fishermen that have grown up in this area, father, son, both guides. Um, Terry's been a long time outdoor rider and TD has followed in his footsteps and you can see the next generation coming right behind TD, his son, uh, getting out there on the boat as well. So these are uh, definitely a family of fishermen that know this area better than just about anybody. God, we did this a couple years ago. Came out here and played. I, I fished yesterday with your son. It was an incredible fishing experience. But both of you have been here forever. You both guide, you both fish. But you're the golfer. This place is known for its golf. Omni has an incredible course out here. We're playing the Marsh Course. Oak, Oak Marsh. Yeah. Oak Marsh. Oak Marsh, uh, 18. It's been here since 73, 1973. So wow. It's in really good shape. I, I came out before you came here, and the greens are the best I've seen. Really? Yeah. All right. Well, no look, excuses today, George. None of that matters to me. It's not going to make a difference. We <laughs> could be at Augusta right now. It wouldn't make a difference. I would just tear it up. The Omni Plantation Resort is known for its courses. What's really unique about this area is how they design the courses. Just like the homes in this area, it seems like everything is built into nature. Sitting on the backdrop of beautiful Spartina marshes and honestly, it's hard to even concentrate on your golf game because you're paying so much attention to, to your surroundings and the beauty around you. Looks good. definitely a fun sport and you know it's a great way to spend time with people and to really get to know them and you see why so many people get out there and, and put business trips around a, a round of golf because it's an opportunity to get to know somebody spend some time with them and, and really have some laughs Pull me off the boat! <laughs> I threw that Yozuri out there, you about yanked me right off the boat. Kingfish are built for speed, and when they come in and they strike a bait, it's immediate. They'll strike baits on the surface, they'll take baits down below, they, they don't really care. When they're in an area and the bite's on, it can be just non-stop action. The turn me sideways. <laughs> wow. This is a good one, too. Yozuri twitch bait out there looks just like a bunker. And they annihilated it. The thing skyrocketed on it. It was right below the surface and he came shooting out of the water with it in his mouth. Oh, and you can catch him on a plug. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot more rewarding. <laughs> on mono? <laughs> but it's not the smartest thing. Kingfish, also known as king mackerel, there's a hugely popular fish all throughout Florida. Uh, they have a migration period where they'll travel up and down the coast, but pretty much year round you can catch these fish on the inshore wrecks. Um, and there's a ton of kingfish tournaments throughout Florida. This area especially is known for its kingfish tournaments where they catch some big fish. I mean, we're talking about 50 to 60 pound kingfish that are, are coming over the gunnel on some of these boats. Perfect. I mean, with that mono. Beautiful. That fluoro. That's the biggest one yet. That's the biggest one. I <laughs> got one. him on a plug. It is. Perfect. Right in the top of the head. I was just ripping that Yozuri twitch bait across just subsurface, and he blew up on it, threw it up in the air, and got him stuck right in the head. That's beautiful. It's fun. We can get him on a plug. Awesome.
have to move off a spot to vary the targeted species. You can put a bait up on top, catch kingfish, um, catch your cobia. He said occasionally sailfish will be in this area, mahi mahi. But another opportunity that you have is, is down on the bottom. If you get a bait down past the kingfish, uh, there's tons of red snapper in this area. You might have to loosen that drag, TD. I didn't even set it, I just stuck it in there. Mono in the was, circle. Was it on the bottom? I think it was pretty close. It's a... Uh, a closed season right now, very limited on the recreational season for them. But when these red snapper are in season, it's it's the buzz throughout all of Florida. Yep, red snapper. Wow. These guys are pretty thick out here. There's a shortage of them out yeah. right here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, certain weekends of the year, the season will open up and heavily targeted by the recreational anglers during those short open seasons because these are great fish to catch. They're readily accessible on a lot of these reefs and they're excellent. We're probably one of the best eating fish out there. But you're only allowed one per person, so you gotta imagine, you go this distance, you gotta get your one and, and make that one count. One of the reasons that people come to Florida is for the beaches, and this place has one of the prettiest beaches that I've ever seen. Um, not only has the typical white sanded beaches, you know, out in front of like the Omni where we're staying, but also it has some very old, I mean, w one beach that we visited, Black Rock Beach, this place is, is thought to be over 10,000 years old. And in the landscape that's right on the water, the, the beauty of it with the old fallen trees and the, the, the rock formations along the shore is, is truly breathtaking. You're walking on a beach that probably looked this way, like I said, 10,000 years ago. It probably has not changed much. These rock formations, and it's funny, you, you get out there and you start walking on them, you think they're gonna be slippery or sharp, and it's just quite comfortable that you can just walk out there, uh, you know, pretty much be a part of nature, little crabs, you know, swimming through, little minnows in the little tidal pools. And, and just to see the beauty of this place is, is amazing. I mean, these trees that have fallen that have pretty much become skeletons on the shoreline make such a pretty backdrop to the whole uh, Amelia Island area. The plan came together. We caught the kingfish, we caught the cobia, I caught some snapper, caught them on live bait, I caught them on the Ozuris. Really, I'm, I'm happy. And, and I talked to TD, I said, what are our other opportunities? And he mentioned that late morning, the tide was going to be perfect to target these big bull reds inside the, the cut, inside the inlet. So we made the plan, let's pick things up, let's run in there and try to get ourselves a redfish. Well, we came inside now. Let's go fish for some redfish. It's kind of a little knocker rig. Little show car circle hook, 60 pounds. The Azuri Fluoro, just a half ounce. I just tie it inside the, hook, the loop, keeping pegged down to the bottom. Is there a certain depth you want to be in, or does it matter? I get right on the edge of the rocks and fish on the edge of them. I copy that. They, on... They're kind of like right where it drops off. I'll get on the trail. Like right in that. Oh, I got bit. That little ledge. That didn't take long. Oh, hey, got him. Oh, that's a red. That didn't take long. Oh! Look at, look at the rocks and try to pick out the rock where you hooked them at because they're probably going to be in that same little area. There you go. Awesome. I grabbed the smallest rod. <laughs> not always the smartest. This inlet is unique. It's something that I really am not accustomed to. Anywhere in Florida you don't see this, these long rock jetties. This thing protrudes out into the, to the Atlantic probably a mile. And all that is is artificial reef. This is just a man-made structure for bait to get on and for fish to get on. So it's a great area to target these redfish. That bait was down there for less than a minute. Yeah, it didn't Place take is long. incredible. Didn't take long offshore and didn't take long inshore. Oh, nice one. Nice Burned red. Burned beach redfish. This area is known for right here. That's awesome. Dang. Woo. Oh, that's a good one. Awesome. 
Boy, he swallowed that puppy. Is that a typical size for around here? We have the jetties. This is a typical jetty red. We get them all different sizes, but most of the time they're over the slot, 18 to 27. Yuzuri's been a leader in the tackle industry for over 50 years. When you first think of Yuzuri, you just may think of hard baits, but there's so much more. I recently switched over all my reels to the Yuzuri Super Braid, and I gotta tell you, this stuff's incredible. The type of fishing that I do every day with clients, it's in areas that are heavy structure. All this structure that we're fishing around is loaded with barnacles, and these are sharp edges that can easily cut you off. This stuff is so abrasion resistant, and that's one of the most important things to me when I'm fishing. Another quality that I love about this line is that it's white. I love to be able to see the line. I think it's always important to be able to see that bite before you feel the bite. What I pair this up to now is the new Yozuri Top Knot Leader. And I gotta tell you, again, another super abrasion resistant product. And it's a thin diameter, it's easy to tie. That's important, especially when you're tying to these thinner diameter braids. Also, abrasion resistance. And now the staple for Yozuri, the hard bait, the 3D inshore series. This is something that I'm excited about. These lures were meant to be thrown up against any kind of structure and to begin swimming immediately, effectively. And that's important. Heavy structure areas, I don't have to you know, wait for a lip plug to get down. These things are gonna start working. And these things are extremely affordable. They come at a very reasonable price point. It's definitely one of those lures that you need to have in your tackle box. The fishing is amazing in Amelia Island. I knew the inshore was really good, and TD quickly proved to me that the offshore fishing was just as incredible. But that was only one of the reasons why we wanted to come up here and check this place out. Being the first coast, I knew it had a huge amount of history, um, and I really wanted to kind of dive into it, see what else this area had to offer. Everywhere you go in Amelia Island, everybody talks about T-Rays. Best burger, sir? Best shrimp and best fried shrimp. Uh, all the local station. people. Include myself, that's where I go. T Ray's. Let's do it. Historic. Let's go get some good eating. You wait till you get your hamburger. You'll drive all the way back from Stewart, Florida. <laughs> Just to have a hamburger. Yeah. He won't tell me what he puts in it. I asked him several times on the golf course, what do you put in those hamburgers? Secret? Secret. Let's see if we can tap this information here. See if we can give up some secrets. T Ray's built on an old gas station, been here forever, voted a, uh, one of the top burger joints in all of the United States. Incredible food. And we've heard about it the whole time we were here. This is one of those places that you have to come, you have to try the breakfast or the lunch. So what better thing to do than to go try the local cuisine? Hey, a little swell coming through. They tend to get in a certain area. Yeah, they'll bunch up in one little spot. The inside of these rocks have been doing the best. You get bit already? Yep. I got him, got him. Fish on. <laughs> We're sitting here in May, and the timing is perfect to catch these big redfish. They have a tendency to school up on these passes this time of the year. And you can just sit out there, and it's amazing. You, you get in an area, TD said, listen, you'll get in a certain pocket where there'll just be fish after fish. There'll just be these massive schools of redfish down there, and you can just flat out wear them out. Redfish year round, right? Oh, yeah. We get them all year. We get them really thick in the fall. In the wintertime, they stock, stack up in the intercoastal waterway around docks. That's got to be fun. Oh, yeah. Especially around Christmas. What about in those Spartina marshes? You get the flood tides? Oh, yeah. That's a certain time of the year? Uh, just during a full moon and uh, you know you get a strong northeast wind on a full moon it'll bring that tide up a little bit higher and uh, you can look at the um, tide charts and kind of see what how what how high the tide is going to be there you go get them Woo, baby doubled up oh, oh. hold the hook there he is oh that's a nice one they're gorgeous. You never know. Each one looks so much different than the other. Um, some of them are filled with spots. Other ones have no spots. Some are more of a light color. Then you can get a dark pumpkin color. So it's a really cool fish that none of them seem to ever look identical. And there's such a variety of sizes up here. You get these big bull reds, but then, you know, just at the, the next cast, have the possibility of catching a keeper. Fork clinch is another 
a cool area to visit while you're in the Amelia Island area. It's based on the northernmost part of the island, right on the inlet, and uh, a really neat place to see. It was built in the 1800s uh, during the Seminole War, and it's fortified with these giant cannons that still sit there right on the beach, and it's so cool. It's just a neat sight to see, especially from the water as you're going by, that this, was, this is what guarded this inlet, and this is what guarded this Amelia River. Amelia Island is a wonderful place to visit in Florida. It's not only the fishing that's incredible here, it's the golf, the beaches, the, the historic district. There's so many things to offer a wide variety of people that you can see why it's such an appealing destination. TD, he was gracious enough to show us how wonderful the fishing was offshore and inshore. And it's definitely an area that's worth coming and discovering on your own. Another cool scene um, is the live music. And, and you find this in some areas, but really we just stumbled upon a, a little gem. And it's so often the case that you're not really trying to look for something and, and you happen to find it. And this was just the case. You, you stumble into a little bar and the guy's sitting there playing music. And that can be a perfect evening. Just kicking back, relaxing, listening to the music, kind of taking the whole day in and just enjoying it all. What, what was in a cannonball? You probably can't drink more than one of these without dying. <laughs> it's hard to even fathom. Uh, Hit him straight. <laughs> Unfathomable. What do you think, Jody? I think my golf game sucks. <laughs> Baby, just to do some more, just to do some more, just to do some more, you know.